Hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And what did we say last week? We're going to trade between the times 15 Blue Angel and the times 16 Blue Angel. Spot on. Uh, you know, the we're just above 2800 on the times 16 Blue Angel. This probably is our range. We might exceed it by a little bit on the upside, and I'll show you why and how. Uh, on the volatility charts but that's basically it I think until year end and if we close below that 16 times blue angel into year end I think next year is going to be a very very rough year but that's basically it and uh, let's get going let's start with the bonds and basically this is a chart of TLT I think my view is pretty clear while be, we are below 115.25 uh, and we keep on closing below it, uh, the odds are that we have another uh, massive leg lower, uh, probably another 10 percenter down towards 101. It's always happened in the past. It can all easily happen in the future. Uh, don't discount that possibility. To me, bonds could easily, easily uh, just collapse because of the uh, size of the budget deficit and Trump doing something really, really stupid. So uh, that is simply my view. Uh, un until we go above 115.25, uh, I am not a buyer of the long end. I much prefer to park my money right into the short end around the twos, uh, between the twos and the fives. Uh, simply because I think that they have almost discounted all there is to discount. Uh, I don't think the Fed will raise rates next year past much past 3%, uh, and therefore uh, anything that yields me around the three, just over 3%, I'm quite comfortable that A, it's not going to hurt me too much uh, in terms of reval, and then when it matures, I'm quite happy that I can reinvest it at a sensible yield. So that is that is the situation. Uh, to me, the 30-year is dangerous. And if, if I am right and we get a bad recession sometime next year, the twos are the place that will steepen the most in the curve and gain the most. So to me, twos are the safest and the ones with the best risk reward. Uh, in which case, rather than part my money in TLT or the long end, I'm much happier to part my money in the short end. Might be the wrong thing to do, but at least it's safe, it has a yield, and I can uh, easily react to anything that happens in the future. To me, this is now an uptrend which is tiring, we are probably doing something like this. Uh, so we might be trading between 3 and 3.15, 3.25 for an awfully long time. Uh, and when I say an awfully long time, I mean probably a year. Uh, all the moving averages are still pointing upwards. There is no reason to think that we are in any immediate danger of a breakdown. Absolutely none. But you can see how this trend is just very, very, very tired. Uh, it is obvious to everyone that the Fed uh, is less than keen to push things at a faster pace unless there is a significant amount of inflation which comes out uh, in the next uh, few weeks. And to tell you the truth, I don't think that's going to happen. I've moved here onto the 10-year and the 10-year is certainly, um, you know, uh, something that uh, I, I would uh, not want to own as much as the twos, simply because the chart pattern is also more aggressive. Uh, we've tried a little retracement of an ABC, but any close now above 325 is going to be potentially explosive into year-end, um, simply because it... it there is so much uh, less uh, preparedness on the part of uh, investors to buy the extreme long end uh, 
because of all the supply and all the poten potential dangers uh, that that involves, uh, that I just would not stand in its way. As I said, uh, keep your money short, if which is not invested. Uh, that's probably the best thing you can do for the time being. Uh, if we change this to a uh, to a weekly chart from a daily chart, you know you can see that this market is potentially heading up to this kind of level 360 uh, you know just over 350 it, it would not surprise would it so it, it's not something that I want to own um, it, it's just the risk reward to me is just not all that great for the time being if we look at a yield spread between uh, Germany and the US you can ignore this bar because obviously that's a false stick Basically, we are stuck around the 275 to 280 area. We're trading basically in a five-point range right at the highs of the whole year. I mean, it, it's, it's a trend, isn't it? Uh, we started the year anywhere around, you know, 225, and we've gone up uh, 50 basis points plus. So the U.S. is, uh, is going up. Germany is stuck because of Italy considerations, the flight of safety into Bunds, the fact there are so few Bunds, uh, the fact that the ECB is so uh, uh, and so lax with its monetary policy and will continue reinvesting the Bunds it has for many, many years. So being short of Bunds is a very tough one when you can be short of Treasuries and the market quite... Um, quite sensibly is doing that. That has uh, repercussions on the dollar. And let's have a look at the DX chart now. Daily chart of the DX. Well, what is DX doing? Uh, DX closed yet again above the 96.50. And all it did is was overbought. We were, if I enlarge this, we were trading above the Bollinger Bands, golden Bollinger Bands. We stopped everybody out couple of days of indecision and back up we go and now the resistance is going to be around 97.30 to 97.50 uh, that's going to be your level but unfortunately simply because we have a situation in which the spread between 10-year Germany and 10-year uh, US is not aggressively going out it is remaining stable around that 275 to 280 area. Uh, we have a dollar which doesn't have all that much impulsion. It is basically meandering up. Uh, the fact that it's stabilized above 96.50 to me tells me that it's going to take some time, but it's definitely going to head towards 99. If we now change this for a uh, for a weekly pattern, you can see even better what I'm talking about. And we enlarge this. You can see that it's going to take a few weeks for this Bollinger Band to start going out. So uh, it's going to take time, but the trend is obvious. You buy the dip and you or you stay long and you protect yourself below this level with options. This level being... Uh, 95.80 so 96 puts and stay long the 96 puts are very cheap uh, because we will uh, get to 99 in the fullness of time it might take two or three months but we are heading towards 99 which is the previous uh, very important pivot and resistance level I don't want to cover equities until we have covered volatility because the picture actually is much clear, clearer in volatility than it is in equities. Uh, let's start out from a weekly uh, position. And the weekly position to me is very clear. Uh, this, let's enlarge it. We have all the move the important moving averages around the 1460 1470 area don't forget this is vix which just moves like 50 basis points um, in in you know in bat of an eyelid 
that to me is extremely unlikely to be broken it might be retested and that actually would match up with that uh, 2840 uh, level uh, that we saw uh, where it stopped 2840 2860 where, where where the market went that day that it broke really hard in october paused for a while to me, that is uh, probably the most likely scenario that the market will try at some stage 2840 to 2860, but it's going to be a massive level to short. Anyway, so going back to volatility, here we are. This is going to be uh, probably what we do. We do four or five weeks of uh, trading between 20 and 14 uh, 80, 49, 15, call it, and then we spike up. We do one of these basically, and and then we spike up. So we'll do a cup and handle, and we go. And this time we will go monster. But that's your weekly chart. If we go to the uh, to the daily, you can see how pronounced the slope of the 200 day and the 50 day now is this is basically where we got in on uh, on what was it um, Thursday uh, and you can see now that we had the reaction we've gone up to fill the gap the short-term moving averages are still pointing down. So the battle is going to be between this moving average and this moving average. So what we are saying on the next three or four days, the battle is going to be between, well, let's call it uh, 28, uh, 27.40 and uh, 28, uh, 10, 20 in, in the, in, in the, in, in the S&Ps. If we go down, uh, even more in the shorter time frames and this is a 130 minute chart so basically uh, three bars per day or whatever it is we can see that the situation is not as bullish uh, the 200 day is now support but we have quite a bit of room below the 200 day this is why I say at some stage, uh, I would not be surprised to see that 28.10, 28.15 level taken out. But that is going to be a massive bear trap. Um, all the bulls are going to fall into it and it will be the most wonderful level to short. I, I mean, I, I, I live for the day we see 28.50 in the S&Ps. So that is, um, that is what we can see there. And on the hourlies it's even better you can see you know this 200 day moving average it keeps on going up uh, sorry 200 period moving average I don't think I, I think the market at some stage will touch it whether it does one of these and then back up but it will touch that 20 level and that is a gap fill basically on the S&Ps around the you know 2720 area or something like that so that is what i think is going to happen um the range now to me is uh 27 25 to 28 30 40 and uh will be you know and this is what volatility tells me i haven't even looked at an s p chart i'm looking at volatility and i know where s p was trading and that is what i want to see i you know now you should be looking at volatility you should not be looking at an s p chart at all you should be just trading the s p when volatility gets to a level wherever it might be okay let's get down now to um to the um to the s p's long I mean this is an hourly chart where is the scene of the crime on this chart the scene of the crime is here this is the scene of the crime 2861 this is the level that I would love 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 to see I'm gonna get so short there that it's gonna be um, you know it, it 
I don't, that is the level that after which I just don't care. That is the level I want to trade. And if I can trade that level, I'll be very happy. I'm going to buy so many long-term puts there that I'm going to empty my account of any money. It's all going to be invested in puts. So that is the, um, that is the level that I want to trade. The question is, how do we get there? And do we get there? I think we do, simply because we, I showed you in the volatilities, the level that uh, the amount of uh, uh, room there is below the 200 day moving average there. So it would not surprise me if we try to break down a, a little bit, fail, get support around, you know, the gap fill complete, and then shoot up, take out these stops. Everyone gets bullish. Everyone gets stopped out above these levels. Everyone gets stopped up stopped out above 2825 and what happens you know within a couple of days we are trading 2860 2860 is the level i so 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 want to trade and so should you want to if we enlarge into a daily time frame well it's not much different really the uh, moving averages have stabilized and I'm pretty damn sure that the market being the market at some stage is going to try and push up, you know, towards the 2860 level that is so important. That is where, uh, you know, it, it's going to be the gift of the millennium, I think. But, you know, I might be wrong. That is the level that I'm going to mark down. And that is the level that we will trade. It's not going down at the moment. Okay. It's not going down at the moment. If even if you were to break 2850, it'll get caught by 2740. So these levels here are going to be pretty good to uh, buy uh, the market looking for that 2860 uh, sometime this year. Okay, you might have thought that if the market is going out towards 2860, that's all good news and all is wonderful and all is well. Well, what is the market actually doing? Uh, and this is a chart of NQ. Uh, it is actually allowing for time to open up these Bollinger Bands. And when we go up towards the 2860 and we're trading somewhere around 7,250, 7,350 in the NQ, uh, that is going to be the uh, the time when the trap door just opens because the market, having tried these levels, then starts coming down and all the high beta stocks start coming down at once. These moving averages are going to open up and into year end we could be trading quite significantly lower. And if not into year end, then at the beginning of the year. Uh, the market loves to give you surprises in December and I think... Uh, that the surprise is going to give you is how much it's going to just collapse in the last few days of the year because everybody will be long and there'll be nothing left to look forward to. Right, so what are our biases for next week? Well, we've said avoid TLT. It's just very, very dangerous. Um, avoid, I mean, you, being short of boons is makes sense it, it's just such a frustrating trade because of all the cross currents nothing's changed there this is what we said last year i mean uh, last week uh 20 uh, we know what the bottom is the bottom for the time being is 26 25 it will not go through there there is absolutely no reason even though i am overall tending bearish now i mean even i know that it's not going to go through 26.25, I mean, no way. I will be a massive buyer down there. Uh, the 16 times Blue Angel is 2,800, and 28.61 is the level for put spreads. NQ is actually doing what NQ should do, which is basically meander sideways, stop everyone out, both the longs and the shorts, make a feint for the upside, and then collapse. That is my, uh, my view of NQ. Uh, it's as simple as that. The thing which is holding up SPX is XLF because the curve is steepening. 
and that also tells me the, the SBX will not go through the 15 times Blue Angel unless something humongous changes in the yield curve and we will be able to spot that before it does. Okay, so here we have what we said last week, buy the dip range 1650, 1624, we did it, we got 1650, we made some good money out of it. And now I'm saying only closes above 21 indicate immediate danger in the S&Ps. So unless we start closing above 21, we are still in, in that trading range, which is probably 2700 as the base of as the base for it. So, or maybe 20, uh, 2680 where the gap is, but you know, I'm giving you roughly the, the area. So it's way above 2625 in any case. Okay. So that is what I'm saying. Volatility is telling me that the market is more likely at some stage to break up and get to my 2861 level than it is to come anywhere near the 2625. Uh, we have several more weeks of stopping people out and grinding out both the lows and the highs. Uh, European equities, I'm hoping that that 2861 is going to coincide with 11,800 in the DAX. Okay, so that is what I'm hoping we will see and I'm hoping to be able to get both positions on. We told you we think about the dollar while it's above 96.50 it'll have faints below it but the trend is up there is absolutely no reason not to think that the dollar is going to uh, collapse from these levels it won't if it collapses it'll collapse from 99 or 100 it's not going to collapse from here and this is what we've been saying stay away from high beta there will be days when it outperforms but overall the trend is down and you can see all that from the speedometer on the uh, riskdials.com page. Uh, have a look at it every day. It, the risk dial is still as anemic as hell. And it will take much, much higher prices and the spreads and the high beta spreads to move so much that I just don't see it happening. And I think the speedometer is and the risk on off model is telling you that something very bad is going to happen at some stage. And if you see 2861, do yourselves a favor. That is the level. Buy as many puts as you can stand. Thank you very much indeed. And tweet you on Monday.